and in three, two, one. Hey guys, it's uh, the Undecided T. Today we're here uh, with just different, the most efficient versions of like energy gatherers, I guess, for Industrial Craft 2 for each different generator type. So I'm going to go through and show you them, and then if need be, I'll show you how to make it. Um, this is the water mill. This is commonly referred to as a water tower for, I guess, obvious reasons. Um, it's the way that these wire mills, when they're submerged in water like this, calculate how much energy they put out is it's like 0 0.01 energy per tick, which is what Minecraft calculates time in per water block that's surrounding it in a 9 by 9 square. So it's not really a very large amount, so it's more efficient just to group them like this than to give them each their own individual water square. And these are producing at a pretty slow rate. These have been running for quite a while. Um, but this is just one layer, like that one I'll sh and we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to show you how to make one layer um, of this. You're going to want to make a container just like this. Three, 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 with the little squares on the sides. And then you're going to want to fill the bottom layer with water. I know I'm in creative. I'm sure you can figure out how to do this on your own. You're going to want to put wire there, water mills there, 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 and there, and then a cable there. And you're going to want to, oh, not six, uh, get any block. I sh ch chose sandstone because that's what I had on a, on a load bay, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, you're going to want to fill it up kind of like this. Go back here. And fill it just kind of like that. And get your solid on top. Knock these blocks back out. And that's good. So now you've got water all around them. And you just pop you can run cable out of this or like I did pop an MFE on top and it starts charging and let's make it daytime again so this is something that you'd see on a world I know when I tried to use water power once I made one of these actually I made four of these in a little square that were twice as tall as this one is and they pumped out quite a bit of power but basically it's a layer of four you only have to have one wire block in between each one and that creates a good amount of energy. Again, this has been running for quite a while. But you can see it's a lot faster than that. Oh yeah. I forgot to mention this. This is a useful tool. The EU Reader. Basically, you right-click on a block, on a piece of wire, and it starts a measurement. And you right-click it again later, and it tells you the average amount of energy over a couple of ticks. And EU is for energy, and as you can see, it varies quite a lot. Kind of depends. I think it's a little buggy right now. Not 100% sure. As you can see, that's much lower than the several thousands that we were getting up here. Alright, and then this is regular generators. Um, kinda inefficient, because it burns a whole lot of coal, whereas the rest of these pretty much don't use anything. And you can see, it charges a lot faster than either of those, but it burns up your coal. This one is my personal favorite if you don't have access to solar power, which is this over here, which is the geothermal generator. 
basically the way I've got this set up right now, oh yeah, and if you were wondering how that's pumping, I've got just a wire right there in the middle. Um, this is a geothermal generator, and basically how I've got this set up is what you want to do is you want to put the geothermal generator somewhere over a lava pit that you found, and then put a pump beside it. Put the redstone engines, and you can set it up just like this, and they will start pumping the pump. And I just conveniently put this uh, water or lava pit down here, and you see the pump starts to lower into the lava and pump the lava out into the geothermal generator. See, it turns on, and you see that charges that very rapidly. And then once you run out of lava here, you can destroy the generator. Or you can really just destroy the pump and move it to another lava pit and then use waterproof pipes and pipe those back to the and use those to pipe the lava back to the generator. So that's the geothermal generator. Pretty simple. Pump geothermal generator, redstone engines around it. And I set this up to cut it off so that it wouldn't pump all my lava out while I was setting everything else up. Okay, then there's my personal favorite out of all of these is the solar flower. And this is the most efficient way to operate solar panels, and I will show you how to make one of these. I'm going to put it a little bit higher in the sky just for demonstration purposes. Basically what you're going to want to do is make a little plus with the wires and then place them here, 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 all around the outside basically. And you're going to want to put one up there. Don't ask why. It's for transfer purposes. It works a little bit better. Actually no it doesn't. They fixed that. That was in the old version. And then you're going to want to do something like that. And then I'll stick my MFE down he here. And you can see that it's charging very rapidly, using up no resources whatsoever except for what it took to make the solar panels. And yeah. Oh, so it works here. Solar panels are a lot more constant. You get 13 EU per tick, and that's what these measure in. It's EUs. And ticks go by really fast. I think it's like 8 ticks per second or something like that. Do squids spawn in here? Yes, they did. Okay, then. And as you can see, it's quite efficient. Now this, I would highly advise staying away from these. But if you can't tell, we're going way up in the sky. If you remember that video, you'll probably know what I'm going to. But it's wind power. And I just went all the way up to pretty much the top of the world, because the higher up you are, the better the wind power is supposed to be. And let me stick an MFE on the end of this wire so that you can see just how awful this is. Yeah. All the way up at the top of the world and there's still a chance that it won't work. Yeah. So I would have away from wind power. Unless I'm doing something wrong, and if I am, you can tell me in the comments. But from what I can tell, I'm doing everything right, and it's just not working. Now, going back to solar power, I forgot to mention something. You're probably wondering what these three things are here. 
Well, they are upgrades to the solar panels. This one over here is the advanced solar panel. It's one step up. You have to have these weird glass panes, advanced alloys, and all of this add onto the solar panel, and it makes the advanced solar panel. And you see it's generating 8 EU per tick by itself. And it has a little storage bay inside it. That whole setup over there generates 13 EU per tick. This generates almost as much in one block, so you can kind of see the advantage of it. This is the hybrid solar panel. It's used with an advanced solar panel and all of this stuff. Yeah. Takes a lot to make one of these. And it generates 64 EU per tick. Has the same storage capacity as, well, I don't know. Is this uh, MF? Has less than MFE, but you know, for it being built in, that's not bad. Um, it has an output put of 128 EU per tick, which means basically when you hook a wire to it, if the wire can take it, it'll output 128 EU per tick. And it generates, well, eight times that, that one. So this is the most efficient one we've seen so far as far as space goes. It generates more than any of these and obviously requires less space. Yeah. Takes a lot to make one of these though. These iridium plates are hard to get. Um, and this is an advanced hybrid solar, something like it. Ultimate hybrid solar. That's a hybrid solar panel. That's an ultimate hybrid solar panel. And it's made with advanced solar panel with whatever these are that looks like a pan but uh, anyways or eight hybrid solar panels around advanced circuit which is a lot of resources considering what one of these takes to make and basically it generates 512 EU per tick it's already filled up a million storage of a million I'll let you see how fast this goes look at that if you need a lot of energy this is the way to go and I completely I just realized I completely forgot about nuclear energy but you know this will be good for now um, nuclear energy is really complicated so I will make a whole video about that probably later yeah, that's a lot of energy. Like that's that's three hundred thousand. Oh, that's filled up a hundred thousand. This right here, which is my favorite, which is the most efficient basic, has only filled up ninety thousand, and that's been going a lot longer than that has. See, and as the sun sets, the the generation goes down a little bit, but it's still a lot. And. If you've got, you know, th let's let's get one of these. If I remember correctly, these store a lot. Yeah, they store a million by themselves. Just do a little test here. And let's make it daytime. This instantly starts generating, and this is four of the advanced solar panels 
hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. And you've got fifteen minutes of day or so, from what I remember, unless it's changed. And you've already got two hundred and fifty thousand in about a minute. So that's gonna fill up all of these, and if you can't live through one night with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with eight million units of power, uh I applaud you and you've probably got a whole field of these by that point. Because if you just did this Yeah. Oh wait, this holds 10 million. Yeah, you'll generate a whole heck of a lot of power. So that's going to be it for today. Um, hope you learned something. As always, questions, comments, always appreciate I'll try and get to every question. Um, yeah, see y'all later.